So, I thought we have a little chat about what's happened with my work with Danielle from the Shem. Different offices here, different uh, ways. And Vevalia suggested I should uh, work with Danielle. It was just before the internet went down last time. So, yesterday I had a breakthrough of the kind that I can't, couldn't have uh, imagined, ever. I'm not the holiest person. And that understanding since my Revalia told me to learn to understand grace and that is not always how I my strongest suit. I'm, I'm all into action and trust and uh, like that, that, that really connecting that way and um, and I felt the pull and I made it simpler and simpler. I call Aniel in the evening when I do my evening prayers for the all of the world. So shoot up those prayers up there. Knock on the door once again with requests. And, um, and uh, in the morning I felt... No, I'm not going to do my, I always call my Vevalia, Heziel and uh, Nememia in the morning. The first thing I do is part of my spiritual thing, since they teach me my moon, sun and rising. So, um, of the Shen. And... So I, instead of doing them in the morning, I do the other Shem angels and that I work with right now throughout the world, it goes. And um, so I called upon uh, my Shem angels and Aniel and prayed with them surrounding me. So I have four air Shem angels around me. And I just ask, can you please help me to feel what is this I'm supposed to experience since I, I, I don't have the words. I know that my soul always wanted and I've seen people filled with grace. And I've seen the change when they are in that state and that is not words, that is something when you really see and know and feel it and there there is something there and and maybe it was because I was so that the planets have been so crazy and um, everything else that goes on around the world the floodings the threats the wars and so on and instead of just asking grace to understanding grace. Yesterday I just said, please help me to understand what grace is, open my heart. And I said um, one short prayer and my soul lifted. Uh, and I've never been I'm always floating, floating around in space, so that isn't uh, the thing, but this was just so pure, powerful, and loving. And I know the peace you have when you do like a Buddhist meditation and you connect to wholeness and all your HEA and you have that connection and you sometimes feel that everything is and all that. But this was like... I've always known there is something more in, more beyond that. That's why I can't ever call myself like doing Buddhism since I know within myself that there is more. You have to keep on going above, breakthrough. And 
what can I... It wasn't only that I forgave everything. Which is hard for me since I, I'm a Scorpio, I remember everything. So... But I was grateful for all the bad things that have happened in my life. So I start to be grateful and rambling through being grateful for all the bad things that have happened. One by one and being grateful for what they have taught me and lifting it up, not burdened by it. I always do my confessions to feel lighter and soul and all that thing, but but this was so different since it wasn't just the peace and harmony. It was the power of love that shook me to my core. So the love that I can't explain It was the total trust, total forgiveness, total acceptance. And gratitude for everything. I can't find the words, but <laughs> but the point is, if I can feel it by asking the angels differently, not giving a damn about the books or the traditions or whatever. I've always followed. If I managed, then anybody can. And within that moment, I had the clarity of why everything. Why things have to change, why things happen, and the peace that all the fallen ones, all those who suffer, that's not in vain. And there are We have an opportunity here, each of us, in whatever way we can do. It's going, these uh, new threats and all that shablang and blah blah, it's all going to create that new leaders will come, the old ones will disappear, and then there is, was this warning of the mistake. People choose a leader. They want to get back to their comfortable lives. Oh, we got this new leader. He's, he or she is great and they are going to do it better. No, you have to somehow, in whatever way, if you have a local small politician, when those shifts come and you start to support it, you have to keep in connected and check them out, not by spying on them or any kind of that thing, but staying connected to whatever case uh, or thing you are working with and asking questions and keeping them to have you answer back. Otherwise, we have the new build-up that they start here 
helping people, then they start to climb up and they start pleasing other politicians and then they go into money and power and all the temptation. And uh, then that, that will just repeat itself once more. Um, and when crisis struck, it's so easy to follow a hero, somebody who won a battle, let's say, doing heroic things, and that's, that's normal. But you should also keep the balance so it doesn't get that um, craziness, that um, the divisions. To keep a village going, you need a doctor, a nurse, a blacksmith, a veterinarian, a farmer, a chicken farmer, whatever they are called, breeder. Those who work with uh, timber, construction, water. All of these, you, you build it and you can't just put them that they are spiritual or not. You need to mold everybody together and see, try to see that each one is as equally. The plumber is important, everybody is important, no matter what, and build and listen. And that is the pillars you need in a community to get it going. And, and anybody who works hard, you can't just sit there and wait that uh, things fall in your lap when times are hard. You, anybody can do something. You can always, if you can't, if you are sitting or bedridden or something, you can uh, share room with somebody who's anxious, who is always in bed, also in bed. You can speak to the other person. So there is always opportunities. So it isn't about physical action always. It can be spiritual, it can be mental, it can be telling a story, it can be play, uh, playing music for somebody who is in, in distress and everything together builds the community. And that's why you shouldn't just follow one hero, but you should make sure that there are people that are able in every different aspect. And, and it's up to you to make sure that they do their job. I don't ask a magician Oh, can you explain how quantum physics uh, works in magic? Go so, on, um, there are plenty of channels with uh, those who really know quantum physics. They make great videos and you can learn everything from that. If you want to learn herbal medicine, go to those who practice real herbal medicine. Look up for FDA, look into pharmacology learn that way, learn simple chemistry, learn what combines and what can make something toxic. And there are so many good channels, so don't get hung up on magic or witchery or uh, spiritual things. Go in and see what does science say, what can you make yourself. Keep it simple. And just as the Finn who really knew oranges, that was something we had once a year. So C vitamin, for example, during the wars, you had uh, picked berries and you put them into strong alcohol. That's not, pro not so possible in Sweden since there is 40% alcohol, some sort of law, and you need but you put it into alcohol and uh, preserve it that way. That's a simple way. And that works well with uh, in uh, all kinds of medicine. And uh, the shaman told me, showed me, they took these toxic um, shrooms or mushrooms, 
really toxic ones and put them into pure alcohol and then it lay there for let's say six months and then when you put it on the skin it was just like um, I don't know what is it called it numbs you so so you can do surgery on that uh, it paralyzes you on the so you have to be really careful when you do it but that is the power of nature and science combined and So freshen up your simple organic chemical skills. You can always uh, change the acidity or the levels in the soil by planting different things and creating a different atmosphere for them. And one thing about, especially when people like to use mushrooms for much I don't eat mushrooms since for me they are they are so important for the trees and I love trees they are the um, filters of all the fluids in nature so if you are picking mushrooms and there's been a chemical some sort of pollution let's say somebody dropped a toxic paint or something the mushrooms gonna pick up on that when it rains and it's going to so it all stays in the mushrooms so if you are going to use medical mushrooms and so on you can grow them inside you can um, or in your own environment where you are in control and remember that with all plants if you make your own compost you can see that they can become more potent or less potent and that is where you need some basic chemical skills so that you know that sometimes nutrients in soil can make a plant that is mild go toxic so freshen up those skills a little bit and uh, you can always buy cheap uh, pharmacology books that have uh, been used by those who read pharmacology and, um, and start to look into creating your own stack up medicine if it's needed and, uh, and the most old way that I was, uh, I love history, so I looked at the old, um, sometimes where there was a hospital or something, they have these records of what herbs they used and what kind of alcohol and how they did the fusion. And that is so fascinating for me, for they, they didn't have freezers, they didn't have fridges. So any old historical records go in and dig deep. You suddenly see that they use moss for antiseptic uh, purposes, that they play moss on a wound and so on. So you get a lot of tips from just his historical and they are many times on microfilm, might be on internet as well. And it gives you the base you need to combine science and then if you get out on some little bit of spiritual power and connection and blessing from that so but just know that every time you take if you are in fear and you take action the fear eases since you are not supposed to live your life in fear and action when you don't take action that's where panic usually gets in so whatever it doesn't matter really what but if you make nettle tea or tea from blueberry leaves or go and pick out some leaves and make tea that is taking action so whatever you do is action so creating your own little cabinet and checking out I know that uh, I can't remember Vogel had a old book and there are these old uh, 
herbal medicine books. I'm not talking about witchcraft, but real herbal medicine. And um, so on. And then there are the locals. And if you want to go into shamanism, uh, then do it the way the shamans do it. Sleep. If you are going to ask a tree for help, sleep under the tree for a couple of nights. Connect to the plant. And plants can be tricky. They can fool you. <laughs> you feel drawn to a plant and you pick it and uh, you want to bring it home with you. And then the, so there's always that. So that's why I work with the uh, angels of the area, as I call them. And then I connect to the trees and uh, I can look at the nature. Where, what does the deer eat? What does the moose eat? And I combine all things so it isn't just a spiritual thing. And uh, the most important medicine or ingredient in my magic is the medical charcoal. A baby with diarrhea, drug overdose, accidental, too many toxins. It isn't like what they can give those sprays, uh, ambulance people, but when they stomach pump a, per a person in hospital, they fill you up with this. Same with horses, that has, um, I've done it for many horses, but we use a little bit more than this. You put a water hose down their throat and then you fill up them with water. And then there's one more uh, thing. If you know about uh, Islamic traditions, then you know that charcoal, black charcoal around the eyes. And I think it was in Egy Egyptian as well, that the black charcoal thing stops spirit centering through your eyes, so the black charcoal thing. And, but the most important thing with this is that I use it to cleanse water with a blessing so that birds have less chemicals in nature. What There is so much going on. So even if you only give one of these small and stir it up in water and bring it on, but the blessing you, when you charge this with Michaels and uh, there is the blessing of whatever angel you work with and it's blessed and the power lies within the coal and the uh, coal under pressure makes diamonds, produces diamonds. So these are diamond, uh, child diamonds. And I know there are many of you that are in this state, but um, let's see after a year, I think you are true shining real diamonds and nothing is harder and tougher and longer lasting than a real diamond and that's your soul. So this was a weird video but I promise to be honest and tell you how it's going so this was it and I'm so grateful to you all and ask me any questions you like. I'm so happy to answer as long as I have internet. And uh, if I don't have answer, then I'm there's something wrong with the internet again. So, but I check in as soon as I'm connected, of course, and uh, so on. So, you're never alone. I'm always behind you. If not by any other thing, the angels are looking out for you since I pray for you all. Ask the angels to help you also. Have a magical, magical day. And I'm so grateful to all of you. Bye for now.